Hi gang, I'm Robin Schneider and I'm guest lecturing on Zoe Hong's channel today. I teach digital fashion design at Otis College of Art and Design and I'm the author of the Adobe for Fashion textbook. In this video I'm going to teach you some Photoshop techniques for cleaning up your scanned fashion illustrations. So Zoe gave me a few fashion illustrations you can see here and I'm going to show you a few tips for working on them. So let's start with this one. The most important thing to know when you scan in an illustration is that you need to scan it in at a high resolution. Uh, all your scanner software is going to look a little bit different, but it's really important that you scan in the resolution at 300 dpi. You can't raise it once you've already scanned it in, so you need to start with the best quality work. All right, let's go with this one for a starter. This one's been scanned in sideways, so the first thing we need to do is rotate it. And to do that, we're going to go up to Image, Image Rotation, and 90 degrees clockwise, and that's going to get our image straight. Now, because this image has such clean edges, and it's done on kind of a, a darker paper, although this works very well on white paper too, we can use a really simple way of selecting our image and removing the background. And what we're going to use is called the Magic Eraser. So I'm going to click and hover over this, and I think the Eraser tool is the one you'll see on top. If you click and hold, you'll see the Magic Eraser. The Magic Eraser is super easy to use. If there's good contrast between your image and the background, all you need to do is click on the page and it'll remove the background. So we'll click inside the arms and in between the legs and you can see that I've really quickly and easily removed the background. And now all I need to do is select my girl, copy her, Control C or Command C, and let's layer out on a new board, maybe the inspiration board we did last week. And let's put her up on top and maybe just move her around a little bit. We can scale her at this point and do anything we want by putting her on a new illustration. So that's one way of working with your image. Let's look at the next image. The next image I have was too big for the scanning bed and so Zoe scanned it in two separate pieces. And that's not a problem at all because there's a great command in Photoshop that's going to allow us to assemble them very easily with just a couple of clicks. So let's go to this image and select it. I'll grab the rectangle marquee tool and just click and drag over the entire page. Copy it, Control or Command C, and then we'll move to the other image. I'm going to paste it, Control or Command V. And now if you look at the Layers panel, you can see that both images are in the same file on two different layers. We're going to select both layers by clicking on the top one, holding the Shift key and clicking on the bottom layer, and then go up to Edit, Auto Align Layers. And this is amazing. I'm going to click on Auto Align Layers. We're going to select Auto and click OK and Photoshop is going to magically put the two pieces together for us. Now, the pieces are aligned perfectly, but the color still doesn't work. There's another command in Photoshop that can fix that for us. Back to Edit, and this time we're going to select Auto Blend Layers. We want Panorama, click OK. This one takes just a little bit longer, but magically it's going to blend all the colors together for us, and we're going to get a really great result. And there it is. So if you have an oversized image, this is a great way to fix it. The last thing we need to do to this image is clean up the background color just a little bit because it's a little bit dingy. So I'm going to get rid of these marching ants by deselecting them, which is Control or Command D. So now all we need to do to clean up the background is click on the black and white cookie. We're going to select Levels. And in Levels, you'll notice that there are three little eyedroppers, a black one, a gray one, and a white one. We're going to grab the white eyedropper and just click in the area that we want to be white. And that immediately cleans up all our white areas on the page. And the last thing is you notice there's this little dingy corner here, and that's really easy to fix. All we need to do is grab a paintbrush, and I'm going to go up to here, open my brushes, and just select a plain old soft round paintbrush. I'm going to take the eyedropper and select this white area so I know I'm matching the white because not all whites are the same. And with that paintbrush, 
which I can make bigger by using the right bracket key. I'm just going to quickly paint out this area, but as you can see, nothing's happening because I started trying to do it in this layer here with my levels. So I'm going to go back to my layer with the merged image, and it didn't select my white. So let's undo that and try one more time to grab the eyedropper, select the white background color, grab my paintbrush, and I can easily just paint out that white maybe some of these wrinkles too. And that is how you can easily take a document that was scanned in multiple pieces and put it back together. For the last one, let's play with this image right here. Now, this is a nice sketch, but unfortunately we can't select the background the same way that we did with the first image because there's not a clear distinction between the fur and the background. If we were to grab the magic eraser, and click, you'll see that it deleted a big section of the fur and we don't want that. So we're going to have to make the selection in a different way. And we're going to use a technique that's pretty simple with a mouse. Uh, I'm doing this entire video using a mouse because I don't know how many of you have Wacom tablets or Cintiqs available, so I figured I'd keep this first one really simple. If you'd like in a future video, I can show you some really simple techniques using a Wacom tablet or a Cintiq. So if you're interested, please let Zoe know in the comments below. For this one, we need to select the fur first and then we can go ahead and select the rest. So the tool I'm going to use is in the lasso section and the one you'll find on top is the round lasso. We're going to select the polygon lasso. And the way this tool works is just click, 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 click. And when you get back to where you started, you'll see a little circle appear and that lets you know that you closed the selection. Also, while you're clicking, if you make a mistake and you want to undo anything, all you need to do is hit the delete key and it'll let you back up every time you hit delete. So that's the way we can work with this tool. So I'm going to start on this side and I'm going to start up in the hair a little bit, go down and I'm just going to click, 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 click and kind of loosely select the fur. In this case, my selection can be pretty loose and it'll work very, very nicely. So I'm selecting around the fur in a couple of little clicks, going down the coat just a little bit, and now back up to where I started and close my selection. So now it's really easy to hit delete on my keyboard to remove the background. Except look what happened. It opened up this dialog box and that's because this is actually a background layer. And a background layer works differently than a regular layer. We don't want this right now, so we're going to double click on the background layer and I'm going to rename this illustration. And you can rename it anything you want, but we just need it to not be a background layer. And now if I hit delete on my keyboard, you'll see it actually will remove that background. Let's do the same on the other side. I'm going to start up in the hair and then I'm going to go ahead and select all these little bits of fur. and I'll get rid of them by Command or Control D, deselecting them. And now if I click on the back with my magic eraser, it'll delete the entire background. But you'll notice if we zoom in here that it still deleted a bunch of the fur. And it's because I didn't do a very good job with my earlier selection. So I'm going to undo Control or Command Z. And we're going to fix this a little bit. I think the problem is I didn't take out enough up here or go down far enough into the coat. So I'm going to fix that. We'll go back to the polygon lasso and I'm just going to go click, 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 click and grab this piece here. And actually, maybe I just need to go much farther into the hair because there's a lot of sort of light and open pieces here. So we'll close the selection. We'll delete. Now I can go back and grab my magic eraser and there we go. It deleted everything and left that for us. And it did a pretty nice job. What if we want to bring out some highlights or shadows in this illustration? Well, to do that, we can use the dodge and burn tool. 
and you'll find them in your toolbar. The one that looks like a hand is the burn tool and if I click and hold on it you'll see the dodge tool here that looks like kind of a black lollipop. Before I mess with this though I'm going to duplicate it and I'm just going to turn the eye off on the bottom one and save that just in case I make a mistake. I want to keep my nice clean illustration available to me. The dodge tool is the one that looks like the black lollipop and it creates highlights. So if I were and let me raise my exposure a little bit. The default is 50. I tend to lower it while I'm working. So I'm going to bring this down to maybe the low 20s. If I click and paint on the fur, it'll give me some highlights. It'll lighten up areas of the fur. I can make my brush smaller and maybe throw a couple of highlights across the sweater just by clicking and dragging over the areas that I want to pull out. Maybe We'll lighten this up here. Obviously I can do this even easier if I was using uh, a tablet to draw, but this still works pretty well with a mouse. I'm going to go ahead and maybe highlight a little bit there, a little bit on the edge there. And now I can go back over here and click on the burn tool and throw in some shadows. So let's adjust my brush a little bit maybe a little shadow over here on the turtleneck. Make it just a little bigger. Throw some shadow in on the intersection of the fur and maybe a little bit back here to darken this. Little shadow in here. So it's really easy to add some shadows and highlights with the dodge and burn tool to just pop your illustration a little bit. So we'll knock this down just a little bit and maybe knock this sleeve back. And now you can see if I, let's turn this off and show you the before, you can see how I've popped the illustration a little bit. One other really easy way to pop your illustration is to duplicate the layer. And I'm duplicating it by either dragging it down to the new layer icon, or another way to duplicate the layer is right click, duplicate layer and we'll just click OK. Now in this duplicated layer, I'm going to change the layer blend mode, which is this drop down up here that says normal by default. I'm going to drop down and set it to multiply. And you can see how it immediately intensified the color. Now I think it was a little too much because I don't want my colors to change that radically, but I can easily play around with the opacity for this layer until I get to a level of intensity that I like. And that's how I would go about adjusting the color and giving it a little more pop. Let's talk about one last thing, and that's how to put this on a background. Now, I've got a bunch of layers going, so I can't just copy and paste this to a new layer. I need to merge these together. And the easiest way to do that is to have the top layer selected and use one of my favorite commands, Command-Option-Shift-E or Control-Alt-Shift-E. And when that does is make a merged copy of all the layers below. And now it's very easy to just grab my marquee and select this, Control or Command C. And now I can paste it onto a new page. So let's open a new page, File New. We're going to go to Print. That way we guarantee the resolution is 300. We'll click on Letter and Create. And let's put a background. I'm going to make a really simple gradient background that is a light gray to a dark gray. And I'm going to grab my gradient tool here in the toolbar. And the way the gradient works is you just click and drag straight down your page and it'll put a gradient on the page. And I think that's a good start. So now let's paste the girl that we copied from the other page, Control or Command V to paste. We can make her a little bit bigger. So Control or Command T for transform. I'm going to hold my shift key, grab a corner, and let's make her a lot bigger, and then move her where we want her. And now we've got her on a new page. So now let's talk about how to adjust the color of the background. We're going to go down to that cookie icon again, and this time I'm going to select Hue Saturation. And Hue Saturation opens up here in this little Properties window. We're going to click the button that says Colorize, since I started with gray. 
And now we can play around with the hue slider until we find a color that we think sets off the image. I'm going to go for a color that's close to the color of the denim short she's wearing. We can use the saturation slider to kick up the saturation and make it a lot brighter. You can also use the lightness slider to sort of fade it out like a pastel or darken it up to something a little bit different. And I kind of like that. I think it really pops the fur. So there you have a couple of techniques for working with your scanned in already colored illustrations. So please give this video a thumbs up if you learned something new and drop your questions in the comment section. You can visit Zoe's on the computer playlist for more Adobe videos and also please visit my channel for tons of Adobe for fashion tutorials. All these links are in the description box below. And remember, no one masters these skills overnight. It really does take practice, but I promise you it is worth it. Watch this as many times as you need, take notes, and try again. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.